everybody. Good to see y'all. If I didn't get a chance to shake your hand before church, uh, y'all just missed out on a blessing. I'll get you on the way out. But anyhow, like I said, good to see everybody. I uh, Miss Calista wanted uh, me to, I don't know if anybody did it or not, but to thank the church, we sent her some flowers, and it kind of cheered her up a little bit, I think. Uh, uh, she's been having to do dialysis now, and uh, just be praying for her, and uh, that God will just give her a, a touch from heaven. And uh, be with Brother Harry back there. He's got a load on him now. So uh, God's grace is sufficient. Take your Bibles and turn over to the book of Ephesians, not Ephesians, forget what I just said there, uh, Genesis. I was getting ready to preach chapel again today. It's kind of it's amazing, I had a message ready, I was going to preach, the Lord kind of laid it on my heart to preach tonight and I got to studying for the chapel this morning and and it's, it's not the same message, but it's the same topic almost. It's just, uh, I, I don't know. God's got a reason for it. How, was anybody in chapel this morning? Okay, you, you need it. So uh, you're going to get it twice. It's, it's not the same message, though. Ephesians chapter 5, I'm, uh, Genesis chapter 5. That's where the scripture was this, uh, at, for chapel today in Ephesians. Genesis chapter 5. If you have a hard time finding that, and if you've got an old Schofield Bible, it's page 12. I just want to read one verse, verse 22. Ephesians, Ephesians Genesis. Y'all pray for the preacher tonight. I'm just... Uh, I might do that. I'm going to read this verse, though. I'm bound and determined to do this. Genesis chapter 5, verse 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you tonight for the Lord Jesus. And Lord, as we open your word, I pray that God, you might illuminate our hearts and our minds, Father, with a, by the precious Holy Spirit of God as the word is being read. And I pray right now that anointing from on high might fall down upon this message, upon your messenger. And Lord, just stir our hearts up here tonight. I pray that you might encourage us, Lord, to draw a little bit closer to you. And we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach a message tonight, if you want to put a title to it, on how to walk with God. You hear all of this stuff about, you know, and I've preached this message, I don't know, uh, quite a few times, Enoch walked with God, and it says in verse 24, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now that shows you that the fellowship between God and Enoch became so sweet from that walk. And see, in this life that we live down here, a lot of people that, are, that even claim to be saved, that are saved, they go around kind of discouraged all the time and they get that pooch mouth disease and they feel sorry for themselves. But I want to let you know if you're walking with God, let, let me use this for an illustration. How many of y'all remember when you first fell in love with that sweetheart? Do you remember when, whenever before you, you know, you just started going together and all of a sudden you went somewhere and you're walking somewhere together like on the... Uh, down at the yacht basin or something like that, you know, a nice romantic evening, and you go up there and you hold hands. You remember the feeling that you had? I mean, it was just kind of exciting, wasn't it? I mean, it was just kind of overwhelming sometimes. Now, that's how our walk with God ought to be. It ought to be so sweet that we don't want it to stop. And Enoch, that's how he was. He walked with God. And there's certain prerequisites of walking with God. And you start thinking about how blessed it is to walk with God. 
what fellowship and what joy we have as we walk with him. But there is a great price to pay if we desire to walk with him. What it means to walk with God, in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1 it says, When Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Now it's to walk before God, and I just kind of looked the meaning up a little bit on this. That word walk before, it means walk upright and sincere. To walk before God is to set God always before us when you're walking with God and to think and speak and act in everything as though it all, it's always under His eyes. See, God knows every thought and intent of your heart, but as we walk with God, we should want to please God him in every aspect of our lives is to be inward with him in all the duties of that religious worship that we do to him it's a heart thing as a man thinketh in his heart so is he when you love the Lord Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father with all your heart and that's how God wants us to serve him and to live for him with our whole heart every ounce of being our body, soul, spirit, everything about us, all of our strength, he wants us to serve him and to live for him. The, we need to be entire for him in all holy conversation. Everything. Upright walking with God is the condition of our interest in all his sufficiency. If we, need, if we neglect him, or we forfeit the benefit of our relationship with him. Now how many of you ladies, if you had a boyfriend and he went off in the army or something and you wrote him almost daily, but you never got a letter back from him, what would you be thinking? Sorry, individual. What do you think God feels like sometimes with us? God blesses, God encourages, the Holy Spirit of God impresses on our heart. We read the Word of God and we see the grace and the mercy and the riches of God. But then we don't ever live for Him, we don't ever do anything for Him. To walk before God is a continual regard to God's all-sufficiency in our life. And that should influence our upright walk with Him. Now, as, as we get closer to God, it means to walk with God is not only walk before God, but in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4, it means to walk after God. Now, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 13, 4, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear Him, and keep His commandments, and obey His voice, and ye shall serve Him, and cleave unto Him. We're walking after God. In other words, we're following God's leadership in our lives. And you can't do that without putting Him first. It also, to walk with God, it means to not only to walk before God and to walk after God, but it also means to walk with God. And we saw that in Genesis chapter 5 verse 24, and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Now, when we walk with God, we're in agreement. Uh, to a walk that is, that walk that we have with God is a walk in and by and through faith. And when you have faith, and the Bible says over in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 
For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are saved by faith. We are kept by faith. And we live and walk by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So that walk, when something's going on in your life, you need to keep walking in the right direction that He'd have you to go. You need to be walking with God. You need to be trusting in Him every step of the way, knowing through and by faith that He's going to accomplish what He set out to do. Uh, over in... Uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 it says being confident in this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. See when God saved you he started doing a work inside of you. And when you go up there and you start yielding to the spirit of God to the leadership of the God and you start walking by faith and you start trusting in him that's when God starts continuing that work in you by and through faith. When you rebel and kind of pull back, you're not exercising that walk of faith. When you start walking by and through faith, you're trusting in His Word and in Him being able to handle every problem we got and He wants the level best for us. He's not going to leave us dangling out there someplace. He's going to take us all the way to the end. And when we start walking by faith, we start putting our whole trust in Him and we walk hand in hand through this life with Him. I guarantee you everything might fall down and fall apart around you, but I guarantee you everything will be all right. Everything will be all right if we walk by faith. Another aspect of that is a walk not only that is in faith, it's a walk that is in love. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2, And walk in love as Christ also loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. We should love our Lord. How much do you love Him tonight? We should love the church. How much do you love the church tonight? We should live and we should love the brethren. Well, I don't know I particularly like them. Get over it. Suck it up and go on. If God can love us, surely we ought to be able to love one another. But see, if you've got the love of Christ in you, you're capable of loving anybody and everybody. There's no doubt in my mind. How to walk with God? Well, you need to walk, it's a walk that's in faith. It's a walk that is in love. And it's a walk that is humble. I've met several folks over the years that are just so full of pride that it is, it's, it's hard to deal with them. Over in Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, the Bible says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. When you humble, man, you don't, you don't have a proud spirit. When you're humble, you're you're just you're you're right where God wants you. Humility. That's what we need. We we are to love humbly. We are to worship humbly, and we are to walk humbly. There's, there should not be any pride whatsoever. You've got to remember that every one of us sitting here is just a sinner saved by the grace of God. Amen. That walk 
is a walk that is in agreement with God. It says in Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? You're not going to walk with anybody that you don't agree with. And if you don't agree with God, you're definitely not going to be walking with Him, I guarantee you. And except they be agreed. When, you get, when you're in agreement with God, you can be walking with Him every step of the way. We must be going, first of all, God's way. You don't go your own way. Well, I think it ought to be done this way. I don't know how many people I've run to, over the years that I've had come in contact with. It's unbelievable. They want to do it their way, but not God's way. And see, if you can't prove something by this book, what you want to do, if you can't prove it by this book, you better back off from it. The Bible says prove all things. And the way you prove all things is, is in this book. And see, the problem it, I see it going around diff in churches and stuff, first of all, they don't know what book. Yeah. That's right. And then if they do know what book, they don't know, they don't ever read it. Right. You got to have the Word of God. This is the instruction book, church. It don't make no difference what I say or anybody else says is what thus saith the Lord. That's what's forever settled in heaven is nothing else. This here is the final authority. I had a, a meeting with a young man today that I, I was really encouraged with, and I'm, I'm hoping that he, uh, well, I'm just praying this, if it's God's will for him to be here, but they're going to another church right now, and it's not, I mean, I, I don't know what kind of church it is. It's uh, one of them bebop churches, I think, with contemporary music and stuff, and he don't agree with none of that. He's been, he's been getting some pure, good Bible preaching. He's been getting it on the Internet, though. But he knows what book Amen. is the final authority. Amen. And he's, I hadn't been saved very long. And he's, he's grown to, I mean, it's just, it just amazed me. I, it excited me to get around somebody that excited. And I remember how I was when I was about, when I was where he was. I wanted to learn the Word of God. He wants to win souls to the Lord. He wants to tell, he said, I don't, and I believe God's got his hand on that young man. If he keeps going the way he's going, to, God's going to raise him up to be a preacher. And he's definitely got the gift of gab. Whew, son. He loves the Lord, though. I mean, he, uh, he was telling me, he says, what do you think of uh, dispensationalism? I said, the Bible teaches it. And he looked at me real funny, and, I, I, and he says, uh, well, the pastor where I'm at now, he kind of looked at me funny like he didn't even know what it was. You got to understand, in order, the Bible says in, in the book of Timothy, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible is divided into different sections. And it deals with different people in different ways during different periods of time. And we got in a conversation on that. He said, Preacher, I just can't get over you. I said, Well, there's a lot of people that can't do that. <laughs> so, uh, but see, to walk with God, we must be going God's way, and we must be in agreement with God. See, when God shows you something, that's like if, if you're sitting here tonight and you're kind of wishing you were somewhere else. God has got you here for a reason tonight. You ought to gather up what God's got for you here tonight and apply it to your life. I have no idea why God wanted me to preach this message, but somebody needed it. A walk, when we walk with God, that walk is a walk that pleases God. Is your walk pleasing God? Now, I've been around a lot of people. They have got 
just full of the knowledge of this book. And it seems like the more they get, the prouder they get. And you got to be real careful of that because pride cometh what? Before fall. God does not, you can be, you can go out and do something in the spirit of God and all of a sudden when it starts going up toward heaven, you might go out and win 10 people to the Lord. And all of a sudden when about the time it almost reaches the throne of grace, there's pride raises up inside of you, you know, being human. Wow, man, I won 10 people to the Lord today. That's pride. God will not honor that. When you do something, you need to remember that humble walk with God. That walk is we must please God. Over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. See, God tells us, the Word of God tells us how we ought to walk and to please God. If you want to walk with God, if you want to please God, you've got to get yourself separated from this world. There's no other way about it. And that young man I met with, I says, well, uh, does your church have Wednesday night service? He said, well, no. And he says, well, they do have stuff on Saturday night for the young people, and they do this and do that, and they have a Sunday service, and they got them big screens come down, you know, with a bouncy ball probably thing, you know, all that praise him ten times. It don't say nothing about God. It just says praise him. You ever listen to them songs? They do not honor the Lord Jesus Christ or God the Father, I don't think. I said, they don't honor the Lord Jesus Christ or God the Father. You sing, you sing the 11 verses seven times, or seven verses 11 times, however many it is. Exactly. Need to open this old hymn book up, man, or this new hymn book up. <laughs> sing some of them old songs in there. I tell you what, God will honor that. God will bless that. But when we start walking with God and we start wanting to please God, we should not please man. We should want to please God. A lot of people think negative of you when you start trying to walk with God and trying to live for God. How many of you ever had that problem? Your friends. Well, you're, you're nuts, man. Yeah, but I'm screwed onto the right bolt, though. Hallelujah. I know when I first got saved, I had people every night knocking on the door wanting me to get stoned with them. I said, man, I've got a bag of weed here. Let's smoke some of it. I said, man, I'm saved. I don't do that no more. Amen. I didn't have to leave none of them. Nope. They left me. Right. You know why? Because I started telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that loved me and gave himself for me. So see, whenever we walk, we have a walk that pleases God, we should not please man. Guess what? We should not please self. There's a lot of things that in this Christian walk that's not pleasing to us. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to go out knocking on doors, isn't it? It's hard to go up to somebody and give them a track because you don't know what kind of reaction you're going to have. We should not please friends. We have a walk that the only thing we've got to worry about is pleasing God. Amen. I like that t-shirt or that sign that used to be out. It says, kill them all and let God sort them out. <laughs> that settles everything. We need to win them to the Lord before we shoot them, though. Amen. I mean, you put, put a 45 up to their head that says, do you feel the Spirit of God working on you? 
That convinced them. Like Dirty Harry says, go ahead and make my day. <laughs> that walk, when we walk with God, is a walk that is upright. It says over in Psalms 84 verse 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Now the word uprightly, according to Webster's 1828, means honest as to live honestly. Every one of us should live honestly. It tells us over in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 9, He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. But he that perverteth his ways shall be known. When you walk uprightly, you're going to walk surely. You're not going to have to worry about stumbling or tripping. When you walk uprightly, honestly, God will honor that and God will bless that and the protective hand of God will be upon you. We need to walk in purity. We need to walk in peace. And we need to walk in purpose. We need to have a purpose for our walking with God. What is that purpose? To win lost souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. When we walk, that walk with God is a walk that is worthy of the Lord. He's the one that saved us and loved us. And we need to walk worthy and pleasing to Him. Psalms... Uh, now Psalms, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. It says that ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. When we walk worthy of the Lord, first of all, we walk in the light. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if ye walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. When we walk in the light, we're, we, have, we don't have to worry about our next step. We can see where we're going. See, the world doesn't have light. Light is God. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. And when we walk in the light, that light guides every step that we take in this life, and it'll be pleasing to God. When we walk worthy, we walk not only in the light, but we walk in the Spirit. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How many of y'all have trouble with you? Every one of us, I'm sure. You know, the... These, some of this doctrine junk going around where it say, man, once you get saved, you don't sin no more. That's out of hell. My Bible says in the book of 1 John, he that saith he hath no sin deceiveth himself, and the truth is not in him. The truth is the Son of God, the Word of God. When we walk worthy of the Lord, we walk in the light, we walk in the Spirit, but guess what? We also walk circumspectly. Now here's the chapter and verse I've been trying to go to all night. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. That word circumspectly, according to Webster's 1828, it means cautiously. With watchfulness every way, with attention to guard against surprise or danger. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion roameth about seeking whom he may devour. When we walk worthy of the Lord, we walk circumspectly. And I was telling the kids, that's, that's the verse I used in chapel, and I used the illustration and I've used it here before of a, say a, there's a fence about this tall. 
It's a wooden fence, and it's about that wide on top of it. And it's about maybe 50 foot long, like from here to the door. And there's a cat gets on this fence and starts walking the top of that. And on this side is about five or six pit bulls. And on this side is about seven or eight Doberman Pinchers. And all, either one of them packs of dogs, all they want is a piece of that cat. And that cat is walking that fence. That cat is walking cautiously. That cat is walking to where every step counts. Now see, in this life, every step that we take counts for something. If we walk circumspectly, With God, every step that we take counts for God. Every step that we take that is not along with God and His will is contrary to the will of God, is detrimental to the cause of Christ. So when we walk circumspectly, we're cautious. Well, should I do this? Should I go there? Lord, uh, What would you have me do today? Do you want me to tell somebody about the Lord? I mean, God, what, 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 help me, help me to make another, whoa, 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 help me make another step here. See, when you walk circumspectly, every step counts. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And it's how we walk. That walk with God is what's going to count. When we walk with God the way God would have us to walk with Him, I guarantee you, you'll be blessed beyond measure. It don't take a whole lot to walk with God. He's given us everything that we need. We've got the Spirit of God that will guide us into all truth. We've got the power of the Word of God to help us along the way. So you're without excuse. I'm without excuse. We need to walk pleasing to Him in everything we do. Guess what? I think we ought to be like Enoch. We need to walk with God, and He was not, for God took Him. Can you imagine if every one of us started walking with God and said, Man, that church don't need to be down there no more. Come on home. It's going to happen one day real soon. I believe that shout is about to take place. The Lord Jesus Christ is sitting right there by the Father. And he's saying, Father, can I go get him now? The Lord says, no, wait just a minute. Father, can I go get him now? God says, wait just a minute. And one of these days real soon, Jesus is going to say, Father, can I go get him? He said, go get him, son. See, no man knows the day or the hour except the Father. The Father is going to tell the Son when to come get us. Boy, that's going to be a time. And when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be so glad that you walked worthy. Walk worthy. Every eye closed, every head bowed, let's stand to our feet.